<laughs> nice to see you all. Uh, <laughs> so we're live right now. Hello, everybody. And, <laughs> and welcome to the Nordic Startup and Entrepreneur Communities hashtag live stream Thursday. And this is a weekly chat where we talk with entrepreneurs and startup founders from all over the Nordics and the world to learn about their stories and journeys, both successes and failures. And this Thursday, I'm pleased to be joined by an entrepreneur who used to live in Finland, now living in Florida, founder of a new startup that he's going to tell us about called Super Tiny. Garrett Fuchs, thank you for joining us. Thank you so much for having me. Good stuff. Um, so if you guys are watching live, we want you to comment below. Tiny stuff comes in big packages or I mean, whatever you want to, to comment, it's fine. Um, your comments kind of help uh, broadcast the live stream to other people so they know that there's engagement, so it helps us out. Um, also, if you have any related questions to Garrett at any time during the stream, feel free to comment right here below on the video, and I will pass those along to Garrett uh, during our conversation. So, Garrett, let's jump right into this. Usually, we start off with uh, a little bit about your background, so if you can give us a brief history from where you're from, what made you start a company in the Nordics previously, how you ended up in Florida now, starting another company, um, basically from where you started to where you are today, if we can get into that. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, well, I was born and raised in Florida. Uh, well, born in Florida, raised partially in Florida, um, kind of moved all around the U.S. growing up, went to high school in Colorado, brief stint in Northern California for university where I studied film and um, somewhere along the lines I met a Finnish woman that was on an internship in South Florida when I moved back and this was back in 2010 mm -hmm. and I had this like really novel idea of trying a long-distance relationship uh, <laughs> which I didn't really think it through um, and yeah, we were just going back and forth between our, our countries for quite some time. And then I opted to eventually move to Finland. I just thought, you know what, screw it. We made it this far. And, you know, by, at this time, it's 2013. So we've been in that long distance relationship for about three years. Moved to Finland. Enjoyed it quite a bit. She seemed to still like me. Decided to stay in <laughs> Finland. Um, couldn't really find a job. Uh, at all in Finland at the time, it was uh, easier to kind of kind of do my own thing. So after I was uh, voluntarily deported from Finland, uh, I, I came back into the country almost immediately, which they let me do, and um, I got a visa through family ties because we we we, we lived together for um, a certain period of time that wouldn't allow for us to take that channel, and being surrounded by so much incredible talent in, in, uh, in, in Tampere, we were a new factory. We, or I just kind of decided, Hey, you know what? We have a lot of great people around that are looking to, you know, get a job themselves or looking to create something. Maybe we can do something together and just through networking and, you know, building relationships, we're able to find, certain organizations that had very specific needs there there was the creativity world forum they wanted an application built and my immediate network consisted of a really great um ui and ux designer um, mm. a, a really great marketer and then uh, through their network some some pretty talented developers so we we took on small projects like the creativity world forum and then that kind of manifested itself into its own thing something that we wanted to build which was more okay. of a a tool for early stage companies to, to validate their, their initial product ideas. Mm -hmm. And then that and, the, and is this, is this pitch me that you're talking about right now? That, that original start you had? Yeah. Yep. Okay. That's pitch me. And that's the one you started in Finland or was it Tampere? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's the one that we started there. And it was, uh, like I said, uh, originally a product for, for entrepreneurs to validate their product ideas and it ended up going through a pretty, a pretty drastic pivot. We had one VC in particular that was like, you know what, hey, you know, I like what you're trying to do. It doesn't make much sense. Startups don't have money. I'm like, yep, seems right. Um, <laughs> but you, you have a great tool that's helping people collect feedback. And 
like really shape ideas. And he, he was saying that larger enterprise would, would be more interested in a product like this where employees can share their insights on how to better uh, process uh, in their organization. So mm-hmm. that is the, the short story is that's the pivot that, that, w- that we uh, went into with the product, kept the name, didn't really have time to rebrand it, um, garnered a lot of interest uh, within Finland specifically with Nokia and then indirectly Microsoft because of the acquisition, uh, NVIDIA and a few other companies. Uh, we also had a lot of challenges with that startup, which we can always talk about as well during this uh, conversation. Uh, a lot of things that I learned, I was able to take away and from a failure uh, point of view, uh, but it was an incredible experience. And I was very fortunate to work with an incredible team and to build a, an amazing network that I, you know, I think people would kill to have really in any country or any region that you're in uh, that really put us in a great position. And, and so, so you started the company, you had a, a few friends who all had a similar idea, like, hey, might as well just do something together. And then you started building the company, you built this idea, you pivoted, yep. and, then, and then you had some investors interested. And did you go through any accelerators? Did you go through anything that helped you, your team go forward um, after that point? Uh, yeah, there was a few things. So we had a, a few small investors, uh, well, really two specifically. And it gave us like a very small amount of capital to wiggle around with, but um, it, it was it was very helpful nonetheless. Mm-hmm. And then we did get into an accelerator program. We were able to get into startup sauna in fall 2014, and that was a that was a pretty pretty awesome experience. You know, I think accelerators are really great at helping you grow a network, and we didn't have the most established one at that point. Um, right. Especially compared to a lot of the people that I knew. Um, and Accelerator is also really great at helping you communicate what your idea is. Um, mm-hmm. So you can build that network and you can build that audience. And Startup Sauna was really impactful from, from that perspective for us. And then so after Startup Sauna, so you did the Accelerator, you, you did a pitching at Slush or whatever you had to do at Slush. And then how did the company progress from there forward um, up till today? I mean... Is it still going? What happened no, to the team? No, it's you not know, still going. What, what kind of happened? It actually, oh, all right, I should probably go back a bit. Uh, so this was my first, this was really my first true startup. And I had a fantastic team that I was trying to figure out what was the best way to, to support them and manage the project. Mm-hmm. And startups especially at this time, 2013, 2014, into 2015, expectation, expectations were quite high if you're running um, a really any type of a startup. But if you were in B2B SaaS or you're doing something in the consumer space, there was a lot of high expectations about what you could deliver on. Mm-hmm. And because of those high expectations, I, I felt a lot of pressure and indirectly I put a lot of pressure on the team uh, to try to over deliver uh, quite a bit. And we weren't as mindful with some of the product decisions that we were making, even with the even with the pivot that we did, going from building a tool for for these early stage uh, companies and entrepreneurs that want to validate their product ideas, which is, you know, maybe an interesting concept in and of itself. Um, but when we did the pivot into enterprise, there wasn't enough of a quality discussion amongst the team. We were a little too quick to make that jump, and I was I was one of the ones that kind of forced that in, leveraging the feedback that we got from this VC over in, in uh, San Francisco. If anyone is familiar with True Ventures, it was one of their their uh, partners, Tony Conrad. Okay. And being that he was a pretty well established and well respected VC in the Valley, um, I think we I allowed that to have too much weight. So as we as we went through that pivot, and you know we were going through a lot of the impossible deadlines that I kind of set forth for the product so we can deliver to these customers that have either signed a letter of intent or were interested in running a pilot. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I, I was very good at burning out the developer team uh, <laughs> who is already quite talented, but you know, I didn't, I didn't really have enough empathy at the time. You know, I think I was, I, right. was, still, I was still incredibly uh, unexperienced in, 
I made life very difficult for them at times. And I'm glad that they, you know, forgive me for that. But it did not, uh, it did not foster an environment where we would want to con- uh, continue either for myself or for the, or, or for the immediate team. So mm-hmm. ultimately, we all got burnt out. And we decided that, you know, this wasn't ultimately what we wanted to build. So we're going to disband. Uh, mm-hmm. the, the team that I was working with, the designer went to go work with Musician, um, which I'm extremely thrilled about because he, you know, he was incredibly undervalued. I mean, I always valued him highly, but he was very undervalued in the market that he was in. You know, he's someone that just had a lot of, he just had a natural gift or, or knack for learning very quickly and then figuring out how to create a really good experience within a digital environment um, through design. And right. The guy I was working with in marketing, he also went to go work at Us- uh, Usician, which was mm-hmm. fantastic. And he's someone that was on a very sim- similar uh, path as the designer in terms of his ability to learn. Uh, but he was just, he had a natural gift to just figuring out, you know, your, you know, any audience and then how to get to as many uh, individuals within the audience as possible in any given space. Right. Uh, it, it was so really a good quite, team. It, it was an amazing team. It was really quite special to watch. Yeah. So, so you guys decided to, to, to put an end to the, to the company. They moved on to another startup musician in Helsinki. And then what, where did you go from there? So you moved to, to Florida after this, right? Uh, yeah, I did, actually. I, I moved to Florida... It, it wasn't really my intention to move out of Finland. I think it was a combination of being burnt out and not really sure if I wanted to continue doing another startup again. Mm-hmm. You know, I kind of realized how, how incredibly difficult uh, a startup can be. Um, you know, I always love the quote that, and I think this is Reid Hoffman from LinkedIn. He said, you know, being an entrepreneur or starting a company is like jumping off of a cliff and trying to assemble a plane on the way down. Right. Uh, that kind of really stuck with me. But yeah, I, I, uh, I moved to Florida, South Florida, uh, in the Palm Beach County area, Boca Raton uh, specifically. And Mm -hmm. I got a job back at Apple. Apple has uh, corporate education, business, and retail. Uh, Mm -hmm. Business being B2B sales. And since I had some exposure to that in Finland with my startup, I was able to wiggle my way into that space. And I would hop around the different... Um, the different retail stores that we have in this in this uh, county in this area, uh, sometimes right. down into Miami, and I would support medium to large accounts that were looking to deploy Apple technology, and I would help piece together those solutions and help them with inefficiency analysis, um, like how we can allow them to operate more effectively uh, with with Apple technology and the resources that we can pull into their organization. I think it's interesting because you went from a startup where a lot of people think, oh, if I fail, I don't have any real experience. I did something here and it failed and no one's going to want to hire me. But as soon as your startup kind of ended, you were able to pick up a job at one of the best companies in the world. So there is something there to be said that um, startups do give enough experience in, in the real world. I think it kind of forces experience onto you as, as, uh, as you're learning through, through creating a startup. Yeah, I don't know if we uh, if we got really lucky as a team, but I think everyone got placed um, in a really good position somewhere shortly after we we shut things down. Right, um, I felt very fortunate as well. I, I had an ex- a, a pretty substantial like existing network uh, that was in Apple, which did make things a little bit easier. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I was able to get into a, a role and on a team that really helped me refine that skill set that I was able to lay the foundation for in Finland. Right. Okay. So then you moved. So you moved to Florida. You started working in Apple. You started doing a lot of this business side of things, dealing with companies who would use Apple products. And then now let's get into your new thing that you're doing, this, this super tiny startup. And this is based in Florida, correct? Yes. Yeah, it is. Yeah. So do you want to, you want to go into that? How did you come up with the idea for that? And uh, what are you, what are you building? <clears throat> yeah. Well, you know, so Apple has been a really great environment for me to be in. Uh, however, since I came back to Florida in 2015, I've had a lot of, a lot of, mm, I'm trying to figure out what is the best way to put it. 
maybe desire to try to do something again. Right. And I wasn't really able to put a finger on what that would be. I would, I would be very quick to, you know, come up with an idea, shape it a bit, and then also disqualify it. Uh, so my, my vetting criteria, uh, got, got pretty strict. Mm. Um, but it was, it was really through accident how Super Tiny came to be. I wanted to reimmerse myself back into the entrepreneurial community in South Florida. And I did that by creating a program at Apple to do outreach with the entrepreneurial community and engage okay. with them um, in, a, in a new way or in a new way to Apple where we would build out workshops um, that would help them take an idea that they're working on and bring it to market. Mm -hmm. uh, Apple gave it the green light. Then it went to the head of higher education in Apple. And shortly after that, they killed it. <laughs> and, of course. Uh, yeah. It, it's a, there's a lot of bureaucracy really in any company, but I, I really understand why they did it. Uh, at least internally, I can't speak to it directly, but it made a lot of sense as to why they had a, how to not do that program, especially within South Florida. Mm. Um, but I was able to maintain the relationships I built at these universities that had a lot of uh, the, these uh, like business plan competitions. And uh, I, I, I think very slowly build credibility with them by volunteering my time to work with the startups within their space, mm -hmm. kind of as a mentor um, or what they would call right. as an entrepreneur in residence. Right. And watching them do these business plan competitions, I just saw a lot of potential for, for, for something more um, because all these schools are doing the same thing. There's just no real unification to it. Uh, like they're, they're investing the same amount of money. They're getting a lot of the similar sponsors for it. And they all have the same outcome of spurring economic development. Um, mm -hmm. But they're just kind of working separately from each other. And there's no real incentive for them to do that. Mm -hmm. So Super Tiny was born from this observation and the relationships I had with the school. Uh, if, if you want to check it out, it's supertiny.org. The, okay. the website itself is actually incredibly new, but the, the overall idea is that we are indexing a lot of interesting problems that are societal, environmental, or, or, or economical, and, we, and these problems represent themes for, for startup challenges. Mm -hmm. And I work with the schools to identify certain problems that, you know, that they're very aligned with. And then we're, we're inviting very young, very green teams within these schools that are also passionate about those problems to solve for them. Okay. And it's this, it's a, it's a very similar sprint to what they were doing in a business plan competition. It's just not so much about the business plan anymore. It's about uh, really understanding the problem, building like their own solution to help combat that problem. And they're all competing for the most viable solution. And, right. based, and, and based on a panel, um, well, there's a few different ways that we do it, but there's a, there's a panel that will vote on these solutions. And then whoever has the most viable ones can get a series of grants. Um, and that's paid for through the sponsors within the community. These, uh, these uh, larger companies that have a budget for it that are also aligned with these problems. And then they're, there's other grants that are offered out based on popular vote within the student body. So and you're getting grants from companies who are interested in what these, these uh, sponsors, ideas that come out of it are. Yeah. It, it's more like sponsorships that we then convert into a series of grants. Okay. Gotcha. Um, it, it is a for-profit company. A lot of people have this impression that we're, we're a nonprofit, uh, especially with a, like a .org, but it is mm -hmm. a for-profit company that is going through this uh, B Corporation certification process, which is a relatively new um, kind of structure in terms of what you're obligated to do as a B Corporation, which you're essentially a for-profit company the majority of the time that's operating like a nonprofit. There's a lot of transparency involved and you know, there, it's usually a social entrepreneurial like mission-driven uh, entity. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. And then, uh, why did you choose to do that in Florida versus Finland? Is it just basically because you're there right now, or is there any advantages that you see over to, to being Florida versus Finland for for your idea? Um, 
I don't really know if there'd be any specific advantage in either in either location. I just had a, a good relationship with one of the schools down here and they were willing to take me on as a service provider or a vendor. Mm-hmm. So they're essentially my first customer, my first paying customer. And then I have a few more schools that would like to be onboarded and use this service as well mm-hmm. um, for specifically. So it just allows me to have a, a space that all these schools are in relatively close proximity. So I can really test this out more thoroughly and not gotcha. being a, a, a technical co-founder it, or a founder in general. It, it makes it a little bit more challenging to test something like this. So the way that I've been going about it is I, I built out a, a tool that is just really involves a lot of data entry um, mm-hmm. on the student side when they're onboarding to the challenges and when they're providing updates on, on, on their progress um, mm-hmm. all the way through the actual vetting process with the panel that will be reviewing these solutions. Okay. Um, and then also being hands-on with the teams and going through a few workshops, kind of guide them through practical exercises um, especially if they're really new to product development. Mm-hmm. Um, I do more of the workshops and I'll do some of the administrative backend stuff. Uh, but I, I ended up hiring a virtual assistant that is based right here in the U.S. to like simulate an automated system. <laughs> okay, <laughs> right. Um, which has been incredibly helpful and it's relatively inexpensive and it allows me to test a lot of the same things I would want to test if I would actually build something that was truly automated. Right. True. Uh, that's an interesting way to go after it. Um, obviously, you went from a, from a startup to then working at a corporate to then st- doing at a startup. So maybe uh, a good question is, what keeps you going as an entrepreneur? What makes you keep pushing to, to go after these ideas that you've had, even though you've had some, some, some end in the past? Yeah. I mean, you know, starting with the initial version of Pitch Me and a lot of the ideas I've had before that, I've always gravitated towards product ideas or services that would help support entrepreneurs in their journey. And I think it's just this very bizarre obsession I have with entrepreneurship. Like I I love working with people that can create something out of seemingly nothing that are very passionate about solving a very specific problem. And it's a really magical experience as a, as cheesy as that sounds, you know, watching them go through that entire journey. And, and the type right. of impact that they can have, um, you know, is, is equally as, as incredible. It's also a very tough journey. And I always wonder, you know, is there a way that you can, you can provide them leverage to make it just a little bit easier and to mm-hmm. allow them to learn faster, uh, get to market faster, get closer to their customer. Um, so as I'm kind of going through these different thought experiments, I start to structure it on paper and maybe I'll try to see if I can make it a little bit more tangible in one-to-one interactions with these teams. Mm-hmm. Um, and then it kind of takes a life of its own. And then I try to do something more with it if it, if it makes enough sense. And what would you recommend to somebody who's an entrepreneur who's just starting out, they just got their first idea. They are not very well experienced with, with starting a company and maybe they're in the Nordics. What, what would you, what would you say is like uh some advice you would give right off the bat? Like just generally speaking or is there? Yeah, just generally. They just have the idea and they know they want to go forward and build a team, but they're just a solo entrepreneur at this, at this moment. What, what advice would you give them to, to go forward from your own perspective? I would, generally speaking, being a solo entrepreneur sucks. So I don't, <laughs> I don't recommend that they continue down that path because you're brainstorming with yourself, which will make you borderline insane. Um, <laughs> So I'm kind of in the process of solving that for myself right now. Right. Um, but I would say, look at your existing network, you know, try to figure out what are the needs of your team for whatever, you know, is the problem that you're trying to solve? Mm-hmm. What does it really require to, to build some type of a minimum viable product and be very mindful about the team that you put together like just don't select people because they're interested or they want to commit and do it. Find people that have very specific skill sets that meet the needs of what the team requires, what the product requires. Um, but they're also aligned with your values and, and, and culturally what you think 
this company uh, that you want to start should look like and feel like. That should always be a very thoughtful process. Um, it sets the tone for everything that you're going to be doing in the future. So that initial team and who you select is going to define everything. So that should be a tremendous focus. And how, did, how, did, how would you uh, give advice for finding the team members? Um, should it just be through people you know or randomly finding them on LinkedIn? Or I mean, what, what is something that works for you when you're um, building a team? It's usually I'll, just, I'll default to Tinder. I think it's a great tool to <laughs> wipe through founders. Um, and then they're like, what do you want? And, I'll, and then they're like, you're married. I'm like, oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Um, yeah, I, I would say to find a really good team. I mean, I, there, there's no one answer like for that. I just think look at your network that you have already. Go to events uh, that are either industry specific or just startup events, network around, share what you're working on, make it short and concise, mm. and then just have conversations and see if those conversations lead anywhere. Right. Yeah, and I then would, I wouldn't overcomplicate it. I would just see what you have available that's around you and then try to keep it local if you can. Right. And speaking of your network, is there anybody in your network in your specific groups that really helped you through your entrepreneurial journey, both on Pitch Me and, and also on your new uh, your new venture, is there anything that's been really a key component to to pushing you forward? Um, yes, uh, there is one guy in particular that was very very helpful to me. He was a bit more seasoned, just like overall, just a really talented, very well very well-equipped marketer mm -hmm. who without making it too obvious who he is, uh, he even may, he might even be a part of this community. I don't really know. Um, he, anyway, he was really good at just riffing with me going back and forth on what I was working on or some of the challenge, uh, challenges I was, ha I was having at the time. Mm -hmm. And he would just kind of help me dissect it, walk me through it and just share his, his perspective, which is, which was usually quite objective which is always very helpful where he didn't have a bias towards anything specific. And he would just try to share what was relevant and what would be helpful within the moment. And I think having just someone that's a mentor that has, that has experience in a startup or has experience operationally speaking and a small team, even in a large company could, could create a lot of value. And I was very lucky to have someone that was that, that fit that description as I was working on pitch me. And outside right. of that, I had a lot of other people right, that was just very generous with their time that was willing to help me out. Uh, even some high profile people I was able to reach out to uh, where I would just send them a tweet and say, hey, you know, I'd love to beat you. I'll give you $100 if you don't think it's worth your time. Um, right. You know, just like random crap like that, just to get my foot in the door and have conversations. So, yeah. So mostly networking is actually a very good thing to have. When you're starting a startup, just so you can get people around you, who maybe have more knowledge than you do and give you some yeah. advice. Yeah, you definitely don't want to right. be loose that will work against you. Most right. Of the time. Um, we have time for maybe one more more question here. So, I mean, obviously, you, you've gone through a couple startups. What is the way that uh, that you really narrow down on what it is you want to do next? Because like you said, you have tons of ideas. You shut it down. You get another idea. You shut it down. So how do you kind of then determine that? Yeah, this idea makes a lot of sense to to put a lot of effort into because it can take many years to to bring something to fruition. How do you narrow that down to to that idea? Um, it's a combination of a lot of different things, but I just recently went through this process where you know I was thinking, well, you know what, I have a lot of opportunities to go into consulting right now. So I thought I would do some consulting for onboarding employees into companies and then also helping out B two B sales teams. Uh, structure their workflow and their processes. And mm -hmm. a lot of companies were, were willing to pay for that. And I thought, hey, this would be great. You know, maybe I can even stockpile some extra money and self fund something that I wanted to do. Um, but as I kept on thinking about it, I was like, I don't really care enough about B2B sales mm -hmm. or about, you know, the onboarding process of the companies uh, that I would be consulting uh, with or for 
to really spend my time doing that. It really takes away from ultimately what I would like to do. So then I had to reflect on, well, what is, you know, what is it that I ultimately want to do? Um, right. Which, you know, I kind of realize it's just, it's just supporting entrepreneurs that want to make a positive impact on the world. You know, as it's, it's a pretty general, maybe some people might interpret it as too general uh, of a statement or of a desire, but you know, that was true to me. So as, as I reflected on that, I'm like, well, that's what I want to do. And, you know, how can I approach that and make it sustainable? Right. And I went through a few different exercises and I came up with a few ideas that I felt had enough merit to where I'm like, all right, I'm going to do it. And that's, and that's yeah. what we all came down to just a lot of reflection and, you know, kind of understanding where I want to invest my time. Yeah, simple enough, straightforward. Actually, we just got a question on the on the forum yep. um, from Pokarel Prussian. Uh, I'm terrible with names, sorry. But uh, the, the question is, Garrett, what is the difference between product and service development? While pitching, is there any key mantra you can share from your experience? Um, well, it, it depends if you're building a physical service um, or something that's maybe tangible that you can go through, like say online through a website, or if you're providing a service, I think it's, I would interpret that as something very different. Um, but there's a lot of commonalities. You're, you're really designing an experience as a whole, no matter if it's something that you're actually going to be providing someone, I know one-on-one -on -one interaction or through a workshop, or if you're doing it through a website. So while there's different interpretations, I really see them as one in the same. It's really right. about designing the experience and how you're approaching it. I think the only thing that might vary outside of that is the type of team that you're going to build around it and the skills that they're going to have. Yeah. And that was a two part question. What was the other part again, Shane? Um, while pitching, is there any key mantra you can share from your experience? Uh, with pitching, mm, I would say keep it short and sweet. I think that the narrative needs to especially in the beginning come from the founder's point of view i think that's really important you don't want to try to make yourself seem too big you don't want to you know come off as too corporate to build mm. more credibility with your audience you just want to say hey my name's garrett i really care about this problem this is why i care about it this is what we built so far this is the traction that we've had um you know, this is where we are where we're anticipating um the, this traction to lead us uh this is what we need this is our ask uh to continue this journey we're and then i'll i think it's always important to end with a secondary ask that's not really money oriented if you're looking to raise capital mm -hmm. which is, I'm, I'm looking to build a relationship with a select type of individual either be with investors for future funding that you're looking to raise that have specific value adds or um, depending on your audience, I'm looking to build relationships with certain distribution partners that can help us accomplish X, Y, and Z. Uh, mm -hmm. I just make it very purposeful. No, yeah. good answer. Um, I think that is all we have for today. Uh, we, we passed over 30 minutes. So I want to thank everybody for tuning in. And thank you, Garrett, for joining us. Um, you can join us every single Thursday here on Nordic Entrepreneur and Startup Community for another live stream with another entrepreneur from somewhere around the world. So thank you again, Garrett and, and Nordic okay. Startup people. And uh, have a good weekend and see you all next Thursday. Hey, guys. Take it easy.